Hi everyone, I'm not really sure even what to call this video. Um, but essentially, I know that a lot of us are having different reading times at the moment. Some of us are reading loads, some of us aren't reading much, some of us are trying to read books that are slightly different to what we normally would read. I'm definitely falling into that category and I have a whole reading vlog of that planned for next week. A lot of people I've seen gravitating towards dystopian apocalyptic fiction and I'm in the other camp where I'm really not interested in going there at all. However, I do completely understand that impulse of wanting to read and experience something similar to what we ourselves are feeling and so I bring you these books as a means to access a slice of the now in a different form that is not of the dystopian apocalyptic variety because I don't know about you but um, I don't think my anxiety can handle it. So I thought I would make a video where I recommend books with characters who are in isolation and they're not in isolation in the sense that we're in lockdown right now. It's not that kind of isolation, but characters who find themselves isolated for one reason or another. I have not picked characters who are, um, for some reason, finding themselves isolated during wartime, for instance, being evacuated or something like that. I'm also not picking characters who happen to be in prison or something like that, because that's something else entirely. I am literally just picking characters who find themselves in quite remote and strange situations, either on their own or with a small group of people or not on their own, but feeling very lonely, I suppose. Does that make sense? I hope so, because that's what we're doing today. So I have a stack of books here and also a list of some books, because I went through my Goodreads as some of my books are still in storage um, and made a note of the ones that I don't have to hand. So let's go through the ones that I don't have to hand first so that I don't forget them. So number one, we have two um, books by Claire Fuller. So one is Our Endless Numbered Days. On the surface, this appears to be post-apocalyptic, but bear with, bear with. Um, it is about a young girl whose father believes that the end of the world is coming, and so he takes her to a forest in the middle of nowhere and tells her that the world has ended. But, but spoiler, that might not be true. <laughs> so um, there is that one. If you want a slightly less dystopian type feel one, I think that's probably the most dystopian feeling of this entire list, then I would go for one of her other books, which is Bitter Oranges, which is about three people who are living in an old country house and they have been told, well, they've been hired to create a catalogue of everything that is in the house and in the gardens. And these three people are one couple and one single person and they are very isolated and they get very obsessed with each other's lives. I would say it's a particularly good one for summer. It's one of those ones where the heat in the book radiates out not in a sexy way though some of it is sexy i just mean in a in a in a literal weather kind of way um and can feel quite oppressive i think it's quite nice to read it at this time of year and um, what else don't i have to hand two scary books so if you would like isolated house where scary things happen then i would recommend two books by john harding one is florence and giles and this is about two creepy children um, and the nannies that go to look after them it is a, a retelling of the turn of the screw but i haven't read the turn of the screw but i still enjoyed it i very much enjoyed it and his other one is a loose sequel which i actually read first I feel like I've done these books a great disservice by reading them out of order and not reading the books that they are based on. Um, the second one is called The Girl Who Couldn't Read and it kind of gives me vibes of um, Shutter Island a, a little bit and it's about um, an asylum on an island and a doctor is sent there because there is a woman there who is acting out of sorts primarily by reading things when apparently she shouldn't be able to. Uh, what else don't I have to hand? The House Upon the Dirt Between the Lake and the Woods by Matt Bell, which I've mentioned recently a few times, even though I read it years and years ago. It's about a couple who get married and move to a house upon the dirt between the lake and the woods. And they settle there and they're trying to have a child, but things are going wrong. Um, it's very dark, uh, very heavy on magical realism. 
very, very surreal, very surreal. Another one I don't have in front of me is Educated by Tara Westover. And I don't have this to hand because I listen to it on audio. Very much recommend the audio book. Tara grew up in a very conservative religious family. Her father was very paranoid and he was concerned that the government were tracking his every movement. He didn't want his children going to school. So this is about her childhood and the title would suggest that it is about her education in the formal sense because she ends up going to university but really it's about her education of self and of family realizing that her upbringing is not the upbringing that most people experience and what happens when you have to learn that about yourself it is an incredible book. Another memoir that I don't have to hand is Turning by Jessica J. Lee. I have another one of her books on my TBR, but this one was really lovely. It was about her wild swimming. It was when she was living in Germany and she told herself that she was gonna swim in, I think it was 52 lakes all around Germany. So even though she isn't isolating within a house in this book, um, she is talking about those alone experiences of going wild swimming, swimming by herself, uh, and talking about her life through those experiences as well. I have three books that I would recommend linked together. The first is Margaret the First by Danielle Dutton. Margaret Cavendish, Margaret the First, was born in the 17th century and she was the first woman to be accepted into the Royal Society for Literature. She was very passionate about learning, but she found that a very isolating experience because people expected her not to want to do that. And a lot of the book is about her being at home and being confined to her home because as a woman, she wasn't allowed to travel around. And I would also recommend two Sarah Moss books in a similar vein. The first is is Night Waking, the second is Bodies of Light. Um, there is a third one to this, which is called Signs for Lost Children, and they're a very loose trilogy. Um, Night Waking is about a family living on an island off the coast of Scotland where the husband has been sent to research birds and his wife is trying to do her own work, having uh, given up a lot to move there for her husband, whilst also bringing up their small child. And she's really struggling with this isolation, but also not just the isolation of being on this island, but the isolation within her own marriage, because she doesn't feel as if she's being given an, enough help. Um, and Bodies of Light is set quite a long time before this book, but is linked in a way that I, I won't spoil here. Bodies of Light initially starts in Victorian London about two sisters who want very different things. One flees to go to London to try and find the life that she wants, um, but then things don't turn out quite as she expects. And it is about women feeling trapped within the homes at this time because of how long it takes to do everything in the house. Um, the amount of detail that goes into housework in here is, it, it makes you exhausted just reading it. So the isolation in here is both both physical and emotional too. The Faster I Walk, The Smaller I Am by Kirsty A. Scomsvold is an amazing book. This is translated from the Norwegian by... Kerry Pierce, I think. Can't find the page. Kerry A. Pierce, yes. It's about a woman called Mattia Matteson and she is worried that no one is going to remember who she is. She's worried that she's reached the end of her life and she's done nothing. And she doesn't feel as though there's anyone out there who can tell her who she really is. So everything she does feels like a performance. She calls up other people in the phone book who have her name to make sure that they're not her. She puts on her husband's watch when she goes outside, hoping that someone's going to ask her the time, they never do. It sounds like a very sad novel, and it is in many ways, but it's also absurd and funny because of that. It has a very dark sense of humor in the same way that Convenience the Woman by Siaka Murata does. Um, I recommend this book quite often on this channel. It's because I read it years ago, but it has stayed with me really vividly. So Much For That Winter by Daughter Nors is another translated book. And this is translated from the Danish by Misha Hawkstra. This is a, a flip on the faster I walk, the smaller I am though, because in this, Minna, our protagonist, would quite like the world to leave her alone. This book is made of two novellas. The first one is called Minna Needs Rehearsal Space. And in that, Minna feels like she needs rehearsal space in order to practice at who she is in order to remind herself how to exist, to put herself back together again because her boyfriend has broken up with her. And this 
particular novella is told as if it's a series of Facebook status updates. Minute is doing this, Minute feels this, really short and snappy, um, as though she's updating the world on her life, um, highlighting that performative aspect of herself because she has forgotten who internally she actually is. A bit of a lighter one here, we've got The Santa Claus Murder by Mavis Doriel Hay. I know that it is sunny outside, but bear with. Um, if you would like to escape everything and pretend that you are in an Agatha Christie type Christmas murder mystery, who done it? Everyone's stuck in a house, not allowed to leave because they need to work out who killed someone. Then may I recommend this because it is very good fun. That's it, that's the pitch. I had to pick this Ali Smith novel, which is called There But For There. This is about a man called Miles who goes to a dinner party. He does not know the hosts of the dinner party, but he's invited as a plus one. He gets so fed up of all the crap that people are talking at this very upper middle class dinner party that he gets up to go to the loo upstairs but instead of just going to the loo he then locks himself in one of the bedrooms there and refuses to come out and then this goes on for days weeks and months he refuses to leave he is going through a crisis of self he wants to try and work out who he is when time stops when he's not surrounded by other people you know if a tree falls down in the forest and no one is there does it make a noise if you exist and no one can see you are you existing? What kind of noise do you make? And it turns out that lots of noise happens because people get very obsessed with this man who has rocked up to this person's house, the house of someone he doesn't know and has decided he's gonna stay there. People think he's great. They start supporting him out of the window. Um, it's very funny um, and also just very poignant as all of Ali Smith's books are. And I don't think that the author of this next book um, can have not been influenced by there before there a little bit. And this is A Saint in Swindon by Alice Jolly. And this is a new book that's published by Fairlight Books. So if you would like something a lot shorter than there before there, this is less than 100 pages. This is set in Swindon. And actually this is, I will say, this is a bit dystopian in the sense that we are talking about climate change and it is set in 2030. Um, and it's about a man who comes to a B&B &B but refuses to leave his room because he's just reading lots of books there and he asks for books to be brought to him. And everyone, especially the reading group in Swindon, is adamant to find out just what it is he's doing there and, and, and why, like what is his goal? They want to figure him out as if he himself is a text. They want to analyze him. And the only way that they can analyze him is by trying to do that through the books that he's reading. So it's this weird um, meta musing on who gets to control the meaning of books. And Alice Jolly wrote this after she had a conversation with a reading group in Swindon and asked them what kind of story they would like to read. And then she took all of their ideas and she put it into this. So it, it has a lot within these pages to analyze in and of itself. Um, and another book that takes this idea of art and what is art and what does it mean is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Tessa Mosfeg, which I read very recently. Our narrator in this is fed up of her life. She decides that she wants to take lots of drugs and sleep for a year. And this starts out as just something that she's trying to do to escape herself and the people around her. But then she has to try and justify it with meaning. And it's this journey she goes on to try and inject meaning into what she's doing, making us wonder, you know, what is art and what do we consider art and why? What meaning do we give to what she is doing? And therefore, what meaning do we give to this book? It makes your brain run around in circles. Two final books I would like to recommend. Children of the Cave by Verville Semmelkulpi. This is translated from the Finnish by Emily and Fleur Jeremiah. I mention this as a book about isolation because it is about an isolated community. It's about a group of French scientists who go to investigate this cave where they have been told children who are part human part animal are living. I really love the concept of this book. I wasn't in love with the execution because it doesn't really give the children a voice and I would have liked to have seen that flipped at some point. Um, but I did find it very intriguing. And if you liked the sound of that premise, 
then do check it out yourself. And all of the books I mentioned will be linked down below, by the way. And the final book I would like to mention is The Republic of Motherhood by Liz Berry. And I mention this as a form of isolation because it's about the feeling of loneliness and isolation and overwhelming everything that you feel when you have a child. Um, and it is one of the most powerful little poetry books ever and I always gift it to new parents and um, I will link the title poem down below I also did a video where I talked in depth about the title poem because it is so very wow it's very wow which is a um a, a very in-depth description there <laughs> from me and um, so those are all the books that I wanted to recommend to you today um, as I mentioned they're all linked down below if you would like to go and check them out I hope you're all having an okay week and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.